Jedi robes. The pattern I'm using is Simplicity 4450. This is not easy to find. But the pieces are super simple together. Right? We've got two sleeves, the waist, belt, the, uh, the front, and the back. The back gets cut on the seam. We're going to go over every piece. We're going to do the step by step. It's not a difficult build. There's minimal sewing. It's super easy to do. So uh, let's get to it. We're going to do things a little different than normal. First off, the fabric I'm using is a Home Depot painter's drop cloth. I use the ones from Home Depot for stuff like this because um, the robe's a little stiffer. I want a little thicker fabric, and the Home Depot one is just, just that ever so slightly little bit thicker than the Menards that we used for the Tuscan. This has been washed and dried, so whatever shrinking is going to happen has already happened. But since it's such a large volume of fabric, I did not dye it beforehand. So I'm going to put the whole thing together and then dye it. Don't recommend doing it that way, but this is a special situation. Since it's a drop cloth, I am pressing every single piece first. There's going to be top stitching on it, so we're going to have to uh, interface beforehand. A couple of little things like that that's going to be different than normal. I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole thing because there's a lot of pieces that need to be ironed and it takes a while so we're gonna edit in a couple seconds I don't like doing micro jump cuts jump cuts in general aren't bad it's the one you're you know mid sentence and then they finish the sentence in another cut it just bugs me it's all personal preference though Again, most YouTubers are way more experienced at this than I am, and I'm sure there's a reason. I know there's a reason, but... Although I do record myself doing the whole thing, just so I know exactly how long it takes. So we're doing this on a budget. Most of my costuming is done on a budget because, you know, let's be honest. Most of us don't have that much money. If we're out there costuming Star Wars, we probably aren't, you know, living the lifestyle of the rich and the famous. But our costumes can look like we do. We don't need a lot of money to make a good costume. Which is why I go out of my way to show people how to make costumes inexpensively. The drop cloth was about $20, and it is enough to do two Jedi. Since it's so inexpensive, I decided to splurge and get some real nice fabric for the dicky. We already went over that. I want people to watch these videos. But more than that, I want people to do these videos. I want people to, to go out there and make the costumes. I would love to be at a convention and have someone go, hey, I followed your tutorial. Here's the thing I made. And I'd be like, that's amazing. Because well, we all do pretty cool stuff. Of course, I do want to be mildly entertaining while I do it. I don't want people to watch it for entertainment purposes. Everything's been ironed and pressed. And I'm interfacing the uh, collar and end trim, whatever you want to call it. And if you look, this has got an angle to it. And this one has an angle to it. This is the fabric side, this is the interface side. You want to make sure you have two of each. So you don't have three that go this way and only one that goes this way. Okay? very important. 
And this is fusible interfacing. It's 950F by Shirtail. I get it at Joanne Fabric. All I'm doing is heating it up by ironing. Make sure the textured side is facing the fabric. That's the, uh, the wax dots that we're trying to melt into the fabric to fuse these two pieces into one. And again, make sure you have the right angles at the right angles. And to fuse this, I'm just heating nice and even, giving it a couple seconds, and letting it cool down. Also make sure you give it a good amount of pressure. There is as much in this with pressure as there is with heat. You want to make sure you push these two fabrics together while the wax is melted. That gives us a nice, smooth, solid piece. First piece we're going to sew. We're going to sew each of these so the, the points are together. We're going to put it right side to right side and do a seam all along this edge here. We're going to do that to both of them. And again, we want to make sure that these points are lined up. I'm using a brown thread because that's the color I'm ultimately going to end up dyeing this. Um, I know this fabric is cotton and uh, polyester, so I'm going to have to use poly dye and regular dye to achieve the uh, look I want to. But the first part of the stitching is now done. We're going to move on to the cut table, and I'll show you what we're doing next. So we have the back right side up, and then each front just laid on top right side up as well. That's it. The sewing for this is so easy. It's all 3 8 inch seam allowance. Almost all straight stitching. The only tricky part is going to be attaching the collar. And even that, that's not that bad. If we did the dicky together, then uh, it's the same thing as that. Actually, it's probably easier than that because we're doing top stitching, so we don't have to turn everything inside out. We pin three eighths all the way across, and then three eighths all the way across. Okay, I want to open these up. So they stay open like this. So I'm going to have to do a zigzag stitch on each side. So there's going to be four of them all together. Again, this is just acting as an overlock to keep it from unthreading. Now we attach the sleeves. So more than likely, this is gonna get a piece of Velcro right about here. And that'll hold this open. Until then, we fold everything open, pin it down, and then we're gonna flip it over and do the other side. So we wanna work with the right side up. The sleeve is unbelievably easy to attach. In Western fashion, all our sleeves are belled. Luckily, these were based off of an Eastern. So first thing we do is we fold the sleeve in half so we can find the center point. Put a little mark on the center point. Listen to my neighbor run his GTO.
And then we're just going to pin from the center over and center down. Now I put one pin on either side here, just usually. Either side of the center mark, just so when I sew across, I know this doesn't get folded under and it keeps everything flat. Everything out. Just put a pin right there to hold everything in place so it's out of our way while we sew. We just turn it and do the same thing. This is where things get a little weird. This is probably the hardest part of the whole costume, or the whole, at least this part of the costume. Remember these angled cuts? We want the angled cut going out, right side to right side. So, so we want it like that. So this edge is along the inside, right? I always start pinning one down, and then I come back along and pin the other one underneath it. But we want to pin all the way around Taking a lot of care around these corners because the corners are where everything's going to want to bunch weird. And I felt it's easier to keep this flat and move the under fabric than the other way around. Again, we want to make sure that our under seam is nice and flat as well. This isn't overtly difficult, it's just kind of tedious. We have to keep in mind we're going to be sewing 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. That's where we want everything to be flat. Nothing else really matters. If it's all wrinkly up here, it doesn't matter. You just fold it, so it's nice and smooth. What I'm doing underneath is I'm using my fingers to flatten out the fabric. Once we get past this turn here, smooth sailing. So everything else is just a straight pin all the way down. There is a slight curve right here, easy to pin. do this again I'll show you how I did it I'm go nice and slow this part here the back of the neck pretty easy it's, it's relatively straight all I'm doing making sure that my fabric underneath is luckily this is a pretty loose weave so it should just conform to exactly what we're doing Curve is done, the tight curve. Everything else is just tape. We're just gonna pin and move, pin and move. Like I said, this is the hardest part of the whole thing. See how in frame I am. Eh. The other side is actually gonna be much easier because we, we're just pinning them to this. So we're pinning the collar to the collar, which will make a, uh, it, it's, it's just easier because this is going to try and this, the collar is going to straighten out the undersuit over here. So when we try to put the other piece on top, it's it's a straight pin. It's, it's not more complicated than it needs to be. 
Seems that I am making it more complicated than it needed to be. So, there's that. Now we're gonna flip it over. My pattern's up. Um, we're gonna flip it over and pin the other side to this. We're gonna also keep in mind about those points pointing away from us. We'll get back to that in a minute. So now this is just our standard, excuse me, three-eighth inch seam allowance. Okay, I've pulled all the pins at this point. I'm just gonna fold it up, fold the collar up, and look for any weird pinch points. Put it the right side up, because that's the side that matters anyway. And it looks like we're good. Everything seems nice, smooth, no real puckers, no real pinches. That's exactly what we want to see. happy with this. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold all of this flat. We're going to make sure this is pulled nice and tight. And we're going to do a real close, I'd say maybe 16th off the edge inch seam allowance and just do a top stitch. Nice straight stop top stitch. So we're going to make sure that everything is pulled tight. We're going to have the top side up. That way we can just, you know, because if the bottom side, it doesn't really matter what that looks like. We want this to be nice and even all the way across. So we're going to jump over to the machine, sew that up. So all I'm doing is running this edge of my fabric against the inside edge of my foot. It keeps my spacing nice and consistent. I don't have to worry about anything. I just look and stitch. Pull everything tight. Do a nice even stitch. I want this strip to be two inches wide. 
So I put my tape measure down and I'm putting a mark every couple inches at two inches. So what I'm gonna do from this point is I'm gonna fold the top side down and press it and then I'm gonna fold the underside in to meet it. So we're gonna have a nice clean line right there that I'm gonna top stitch right on the edge just like I did with this side. First, I mark two inches along the whole length. So that's about all the pinning I can do for today. Now I go to the seat of my pants kind of sewing. This is what I prefer anyway. I'm gonna sew the edge just like we did this side. Now, I could have sewn this piece on, then sewn these two pieces together and fell stitched all along here. It might have made a slightly better look, but I don't think it would have been worth the time and effort to hand stitch. So instead, I'm doing it this way. I like this, because it's a quarter of the time and it looks just as good. Oh, for the goodness. This is hard to do with the camera in the way. We're gonna move you, hold on. This is weird, but let's give it a shot. We'll see how this looks. Sorry. So now we are at the point where we make that weird, not quite shoulder thing the Jedi have. That's super easy to do. We're gonna mark over, measure over three inches from the, the top shoulder seam, and this is the sleeve, and then measure up three inches, right? And draw a line between our two marks. And that's where we're gonna stitch. What we do is we pick it up right about the middle fold it over. So we want this line to be just shy, I'm gonna poke it through, of this seam. So when we stitch it, we're gonna stitch, land right here. If we hit the sleeve, it's not a big deal because, you know, it's gonna be under the, the fold here. So let me flip this around show you what I did again. I like having the waist, this part, facing away so this is a straight line. You can see what I mean. So I'll lay everything out flat first and then fold it over. So we 
mark over three inches from the top shoulder seam over three inches and we mark up three inches yeah I count every time Fish and fold so I can feel the seam underneath and I, I know it's right on this edge Make sure all of your uh, seams are nice and flat when you fold everything over. It just makes everything look so much easier and look so much nicer. Like I said, straight stitch from here to here. Then we do the, uh, the last few seams. So I have laid this out with the right side up, back in the cutting board here. I'm just gonna fold it over. I want this seam allowance to go towards the sleeve. So I'm just gonna pin it now. I don't have to worry about it, right? I'll do the same thing on the back side. Lay everything out. Now I wanna line the armpit here as best I can. It's an armpit, so it's not going to be seen. So if we're a little off, we're a little off. It's not the end of the world, but if we can, do it as good as we can. Now that I have that pinned, I don't need to worry about that needle. And we're just gonna work our way down the end, the front pinning, and then down the sleeve pinning. When everything has been pinned in place, I am going to sew along the whole edge in one fell swoop and a then I'm gonna come back with a reinforcement stitch, a zigzag to overlock everything again. And we are 99% at that point. So we're just gonna pin all along this edge. Now at this point, things aren't gonna line up right. If you look here, I've got almost half inch, three quarters of an inch overhang. This side doesn't quite fit. It's not a big deal. All of this gets cut off anyway. Once we, we hem it to length, this doesn't matter anymore. So if it's a little off, don't freak out, don't get upset, don't think you did anything wrong because you didn't. Fabrics move and they flow and they bend. So it's quite possible you did everything perfect or you didn't. Either way, it doesn't really matter. So again, a different angle here. I pin my seam allowances towards the cuff of the sleeve. Fold the armpit in as best we can. So I'm just gonna line these up here, line the seams up, pull this pin, go through both of them, and pull that pin completely. Then we pin the ends. We pin all the way, seam. I usually start at like a wrist, go all the way around and down, and then do a reinforce or a uh, overlock stitch. That's it. Normally I would just hem it at that point, but this is for someone who is currently not available for hemming. Joys of safety protocols and all that, you can wait. So what I'm gonna do after that is I'm going to put a zigzag stitch all the way around the outside exposed edges. That way I can wash, dry, do whatever I need to do with it. But this Jedi is 90% done at this point. At least the, the the Jedi robe. Too many Tuscans, I keep wanting to call it an outer robe. It is not an outer robe. It's not an inner robe. It's just a robe. Say it enough times it stops making sense. Kind of like scuba. All right, at this point we just stitch and we're done. I may just stitch all the way along here and then bring this and bring the other side around and stitch all the way around there. I don't know yet. Though I only have to change the needle setting once. As we all know, I'm very lazy.
Do you think the Jedi had a uniform um, company that came in and cleaned their uniforms? Like, was there a Jedi equivalent of Sintross or Unifirst? I'd hate to think that they made the younglings do all this. They probably made the younglings do all this. Alright, at this point we're going to trim up all the loose edges, you know, get rid of all these little little wispy wispies, uh, make sure all the lines are even, and then I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around everywhere that's now currently exposed. There it is. Not bad. The mannequin's much smaller than the intended person, so it doesn't fill out quite like it's going to on that person. Once I uh, put the tabards on, the, uh, the weight sash around the, the middle, and then the belt, I really like how it looks. I mean, the, the light with the dark, it's gonna be real hard to dye this thing. That's the next step. You do that off camera. You're on your own for dying. But this, this is not bad. I really like how it looks. So, there it is. The, uh, the Jedi robe. Not bad, I really like it. It's super easy to put together. There's very minimal stitching. The hardest part is finding the fabric you like. Like I said, this is a, a drop cloth from Home Depot, so you don't have to have fantastic fabric, but there's just a grain to this, a, a texture that I, I go crazy for texture. It's, it's just what I do. Now, I'm gonna hem the sleeves once I have the person here and can uh, figure out how long they need to be. I'm gonna hem the bottom the same way. And when I hem, it's just going to be a fold, about half an inch, another fold, and a stitch all the way around. It's, it's super simple, super easy. It's stuff we have done before. If you've done other videos with me, it's stuff we've done before. If you haven't done other videos with me, perhaps you should. Um, it looks good. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I can't wait to see the whole thing together. I can't wait to see someone else make one, too. Perhaps you should make a Jedi. 
All right, let's try this again. Well, this time we're gonna do it right. So I have two pieces of Velcro. They are roughly three and a half inches each. I wanna place the first one one inch from the top and two inches over from the end. This is the waist sash. I've realized that the waist sash is the same fabric as the, um, the jacket, but the obies or the um, shoulder armor, pauldrons, whatever you wanna call them, are gonna be of a different fabric. So it's gonna be a different color altogether. I'm gonna put the second one exactly opposite. So we put it at the bottom, one inch from the bottom, but still two inches from the end. Okay. Um, this is just the, the full waist sash, that, which has to be the same color as the jacket. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a zigzag stitch all the way around. We're gonna fold it in half, put a single stitch all along here, and then one along here. It'll make sense while we're doing it. This is actually super quick. If I did it right the first time, wait, the first time? Isn't this the first time? Of course this is the first time. If I'd done it right the first time, uh, we'd be done by now. But here we go, back to stitching. Simple zigzag stitch all the way around the perimeter of both of these. Now we fold it, so a single line from the half inch, or from our, our standard, you know, um, three eighths. All right, now we're gonna lay it flat and we're gonna take this seam that we just made and put it to the middle mark of our, our waistband. And we're gonna do a stitch all the way across here. We're gonna take our corners and snip them off. And then turn the whole thing right side out. So we're just turning it right side out. Now, the reason we did the stitching like we did with the Velcro is so when we do a top seam, this is nice and flat. We don't actually see the Velcro. It's like doing the pockets of the jumpsuit, except I wanted to do one piece instead of two. Now on the other part, other side of the, uh, the waist sash, we are going to put the other Velcro. Now the other Velcro doesn't matter because it's the underside. So we can just stitch it straight on. But we're gonna stitch it laterally that way we have the most contact when we go across. First thing we're gonna do though, is do our top stitch, just like we did for the, uh, the collar on the jacket. We're gonna do it nice and tight to the top. It doesn't need it, but I think it'll add a bit of uniformity to, uh, to the costume. Maybe, maybe not. I'm having a difficult time stitching today. This is not the costume's fault. It is 100% operator error. I'm trying to rush. There's always enough time to do it twice. So, I'm gonna do this again. I start over and take a breath. Make sure our lines are nice and in the middle. We don't want anything to be twisted weird. Take your time. There's absolutely no reason to ever rush on a costume.
Since I'm pulling seams for a minute, I'm gonna rant. I had to redo this because I did it wrong the first time. I was rushing in a hurry because I want to dye the tunic, right? And had I just done it right the first time, taking my time, I'd be done by now. I'd be in there dyeing this a nice charcoal. Actually, the color's graphite. I'm kind of excited about it. But I rushed, and I have to do it twice. Well, you don't know it's actually 30 times, but you know, let's not get technical. There's never a reason to rush, and there's never a reason to beat yourself up. If you're just starting out, and your stitches aren't as neat or as clean as mine, I've been doing this a real long time. You'll get there. If you don't think your costume is up to snuff, don't beat yourself up over it. Use it as a learning process. Get better next time. I didn't start out good. Heck, if we're quite honest with each other, I would say I am currently passable. I'm not overtly happy with my skill level, but my costumes look how I want. Isn't that bad? Take your time and do things right. And if it does take you a while, just let it take you a while. Don't rush the process. Experience the whole thing. Learn to enjoy the little stupid moments where you're making mistakes too, right? I learned a heck of a lot from what I just did. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I got all rushy rushy. Smooth. You want to be smooth. Take your time. Look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. So now I'm just going to pull this stitch and then redo it because it's faster. Let's see on the other side. All right, so the waist sash is now done. Well, as done as we can do it until I have full sizing. So we have Velcro on this side, and if you look, there's nothing here, it's nice and clean. So it's gonna happen. We're going to put sticky bag Velcro on this side. Right? This goes back behind the, uh, the behind. It, it's in the back. That just gets sewn into place. This doesn't matter because this is going to be touching the skin. We can put it wherever we need it to be for proper sizing. With the Velcro this way and this way, we have more play um, all around on where we want to place the, the final seam. So we put the Velcro on, holds it in place, the Velcro doesn't really hold this on, it just holds it on long enough to put the, um, the belt that goes on top of it in place. That actually holds everything in place. But for now, it's good enough. I'm going to put a zigzag stitch all along here, just so I can die. because I am really excited to see this in its final color. The next video sh in this series, which is going to be the next video, is going to be the tabards. That's going to be an interesting one. It might be the tabards and belt. I think it's just going to be the tabards. So, so until then, you know, do the thing. Go make something. Be a Jedi. Be the Jedi that Obi-Wan wants you to be.